1.5 is deader than adornium. And anybody who understands the physics knows that. That is a shortcoming of our scientific community to not make clear to the political leaders what the situation is. In the next several months, we're going to go well above 1.5 C on a 12-month average. For the rest of this decade, the average is going to be at least 1.5. The scenarios that you would need to stay under 2 degrees are just not, they're imaginary. Integrated assessment models and IPCC mitigation scenarios stretch plausibility. They contain, in my view, many dubious assumptions. And all those models, by the way, do not include the decreasing aerosols. Sulfur emissions are decreasing much faster than anticipated because health and environmental regulations are very successful. And when it's burned, the sulfur enters the atmosphere and it reflects sunlight and it makes clouds brighter and longer lasting and bigger, which also reflects more sunlight. It's the real world that's telling us what the equilibrium climate sensitivity is. And that's far better than models in which you can get any answer depending on what cloud feedbacks you put in. When I gave a TED talk more than a decade ago, Earth's energy imbalance was about six-tenths of a watt per square meter, which is equivalent to 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs per day. That imbalance has now doubled. That's why global warming will accelerate. One watt per meter squared is an enormous forcing to try to overcome. If you want to do it by extracting CO2, it costs you more than $100 trillion. It's not going to happen. I showed a graph on the carbon intensity of energy. We've, we've reduced it from 0.8 to 0.7 in 50 years. It's not going to go to zero in a few decades. And there are no plans to do that. So heat is pouring into the planet at twice the rate. That is a principal reason why we're getting these extremely large month after month global temperatures. We have instruments at NASA that measure the incoming solar. And so the incoming solar minus the reflected solar gives you the absorbed solar. And that's really what fuels the climate system. We're reducing basically the funding spend and the satellite missions that are needed in order to try and understand this cloud feedback and cloud and aerosol interactions. The, the most important tipping point is the Antarctic ice sheet, and in particular, the Thwaites Glacier, which is basically the cork that's holding a lot of the West Antarctic ice in the bottle. And if we want to prevent the melting of the Antarctic ice sheet, we'll have to cool off the planet. This is the correct physics, and it's the real world. And it takes, it sometimes takes the community a while to catch on. So young people need to understand what they are being handed by the older generation. They can't allow fake stories to mislead them. Please, everybody, make sure that you have the paper. It is an extraordinarily important paper. We're in a grim situation. Thanks, Jim, George, Pushkar, Leon, and Norman for an extremely important contribution. And thanks to the colleagues at the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network.